on to uh, discuss some basic examples of the uh, homology of uh, simplicial complexes. So the uh, most basic one that we might think of is, uh, is this one here, where we've got a complex K that just consists of a set V of vertices, and they've got no edges between these vertices, no higher simplices, nothing else, just a discrete set of vertices. Okay. Then uh, you've got uh, your zeroth chain group, uh, C0K, so that's always just going to be the uh, free abelian group on the vertices, which we've written here as Z curly bracket V. And then when R is different from zero, we've got CRK is the, the group of R chains, but uh, uh, and that, you know, those are just sort of generated by the R simplices and there just aren't any R simplices except when R is zero. So all these other chain groups, CRK, they're just all the zero group. And that actually forces all the differentials to be zero as well. I mean, here's our only non-zero zero group here, the C0K, and then uh, um, and so you've got a d0 from here going down to c minus 1k, which is 0, so that, that has to be the zero map. And similarly here, you've got a d1, which is coming from c1k, which is the trivial group. Uh, so d1 also has to be just the zero homomorphism. And then uh, higher up, you've got your d2, d3, and so on, but they're all just from the zero group to the zero group, so they're zero as well. Okay, so that means if we look at uh, z star k, the group of cycles, Okay, that's by definition the kernel of D, uh, the stuff that gets sent by D to zero, but uh, D is just zero, it sends everything to zero, so Z star K is just the same as the whole group C star K. And similarly, B star K, that's by definition the image of the differential D, but uh, all the differentials D are just zero, so uh, the image of zero is zero, so B star K is the zero subgroup. Uh, so if we look here at the homology, H star K, remember that's defined as Z star K mod B star K. And Z star K is the whole of C star K, and B star K is just zero. And taking the quotient by the zero group doesn't do anything. So uh, H star K is the same as C star K. Uh, so that means that in degree zero, we've got H zero K is the same as C zero K, which is the just the free abelian group on the vertices. And H R K is zero in all other cases. So that's what we get as the homology of a discrete set. Now for our next example, we're going to consider a polygon. Um, so here we've got the uh, n-gon, uh, k is the n-gon, now which we've illustrated here for the case n equals 8. So the, uh, we've only got, the only non-trivial chain groups are C0 and C1 because we've only got zero simplices and one simplices. Zero simplices here we've marked as uh, V0 up to V7 or V0 up to Vn minus 1 in general. And uh, CK, uh, C1K the, uh, is the free abelian group on the, on the edges. Uh, so the edges we've labeled as E0 up to E7. So normally uh, EI goes from VI to VI plus 1. So we have to say something a little bit different at the last stage. Your E7 goes from V7 to V0. So what we're just going to do is we're going to define V8 to be the same as V0, so then we can say that EI goes from uh, uh, VI to VI plus 1 in all cases. <coughs> okay, so in order to, uh, to calculate the homology of this, which we actually kind of did before in a previous lecture, but we're going to do it again, uh, it's best to uh, introduce alternative bases for these groups. <coughs> okay. So our alternative bases are like this. So our V prime zero is going to be the same as V zero. But then for the other cases, for I is one up to seven in this case, uh, V prime I is going to be V I minus V zero. So it's pretty easy to see that uh, you can express the V's, the, the V's in terms of the V primes and vice versa in a unique way. So uh, the V primes also form a basis for C zero K. And then for C one K, uh, we're going to uh, define E prime I to be the sum E0 up to EI. Uh, so again, uh, E prime I minus E prime I minus 1 is giving, just giving you your EI. And uh, so we can express the E's in terms of the E primes and vice versa in a unique way. Uh, so the E primes also form a basis for C1K. So now we need to understand what the uh, differential looks like in terms of this basis. Okay, So here we have shown uh, uh, E0, which is the same as E prime 0 just runs from V0 to V1. So D of D2 of E0 is V1 minus V0, which is the same as what we call V prime one. And then the next one, if we do uh, E prime one, so that's E0 plus E1 going all the way around here, we take D2 of that, then you get a V2 minus V1 plus a V1 minus V0. The V1s cancel, and so we just get V2 minus V0, uh, which is what we define to be uh, uh, V prime two. 
So D sends D2 sends E prime one to V prime two. And then it carries on kind of the same. I mean, here we've got uh, your uh, E prime two, uh, it's E zero plus E one plus E two. When you take the, di the differential on it, uh, you get uh, a plus V two and a minus V two that cancel, a plus V one and a minus V one that cancel. You're just left with V three minus V zero, which is V prime three. And similarly, E prime three gets sent to V prime four, E prime four gets sent to V prime five, E prime five gets sent to V prime six, E prime six gets sent to V prime seven. And then we get to E prime seven. Yeah. So E prime seven if, in the same pattern as what we had before, uh, the, uh, the differential on that is just V eight minus V zero, but uh, V eight and V zero are the same. Okay, so, uh, so that all just cancels out and you just get zero. Or we could say it just kind of more directly, uh, you know, each of these vertices, you know, appears with a plus coming kind of sort of from the previous edge and um, with a minus from the following edge. So it always cancels out and we see that uh, yeah, uh, D2 of E prime seven is just zero. So this is how the differential works. You know, we've got your E prime zero up to E prime six, which hit the V prime one up to V prime seven. Uh, then the E prime seven goes to zero and there's nothing to hit the V prime naught. Uh, so the conclusion is we're going to look at the uh, the kernel. Um, yeah, so because if you've got any linear combination of e, e prime zero up to e prime six, then that gets sent to the corresponding linear combination of v prime one up to v prime seven. There's no way that can be zero unless all the coefficients here are zero. Um, so the only way that we can get something in the kernel is if it's just a multiple of e prime seven. So our conclusion is that z one k is the free abelian group generated by this one element e prime seven. And similarly, you know, all these v prime one up to v prime seven, they're in the image, and so any linear combination of them is in the image. So um, you know, b zero k is just a free abelian group on the v prime one up to v prime seven. On the other hand, you know, your b one k, that's the image of the differential from c two k to c one k, but c two k is just zero, so b one k is zero. And similarly, z zero k, that's the kernel of the map d from uh, c zero down to c minus one. That C minus one is zero, so Z zero K is just the same as C zero K. Um, so we find that our H one K, that's uh, that's Z one K mod B one K, so that's just the kernel of D one again. That's uh, that's freely generated by E prime seven, and H zero K, that's uh, the co kernel. That's our Z zero K mod B zero K. Um, so that's just yeah. So we take the free abelian group on your V prime one up to V prime seven, but then we quotient out by the group generated by most of these generators, all that's left is this V prime zero. So our H1 is a copy of Z and our H0 is also a copy of Z. So one more example. Uh, I'm going to look at this complex K consisting of two triangles next to each other, one filled in and one not. <clears throat> so the non-trivial chain groups, you've got your C0 K with these uh, generate one generator for each vertex. So we've got uh, four generators, that's isomorphic to z to the fourth. Uh, and then we've got uh, C1k is the free abelian group on the edges. There's five edges, uh, a, b, a, d, b, c, b, d, b, c, d. So C1k is isomorphic to uh, z to the fifth. And then we've only got one two simplex, namely b, c, d. So our C2k uh, is a free abelian group just with that one generator. And again, the most efficient way to calculate the homology is to introduce alternative bases with respect to the differentials, uh, which the differentials behave in a particularly simple way. Uh, so this is how we're going to do it. Um, I'm going to start by defining x1 to be the, uh, the, the unique two simplex, BCD. So x1 by itself gives a basis for C2k. Um, then you know, we need a basis for uh, C1k. It's going to consist of five generators. So uh, we're going to use so uh, three of the generators we've got already. Uh, so x2 is going to be AD, x3 is going to be BD, x4 is going to be CD. So those are uh, some of the generators we had already. But instead of using uh, the remaining things, we're going to uh, introduce some, some extra elements. Uh, firstly, we're going to look at this class H1 here. Uh, H1 is defined to be BD minus AD plus e AB. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, and then we're also going to use the class uh, dx1. So dx1, uh, remember the prescription, we leave out the b to get a cd, we leave out the c to get a minus bd, we leave out the d on the end to get a plus bc, so this is dx1 here. We're going to use this as one of our basis elements for c1. 
So that's five elements, this uh, x3, x2, x3, x4, dx1 and h1. And it's just a little exercise to show that the, uh, you know, the original generators can be expressed in a unique way in terms of these ones and vice versa. So we've got an alternative basis for C1k. And then finally in C0, uh, again, uh, <coughs> yeah, you've got, uh, uh, <coughs> yeah, so we're not going to use, uh, uh, so we're not, we don't have any x's here. We've, we've just got, uh, we're going to have this element uh, d of x2, uh, which is d minus a. We're going to use that as one basis element. Uh, d of x3 is d minus b. We're going to use as, as another basis element. dx4 is d minus c. We're going to use that as a basis element as well. Um, and then, uh, so that's uh, three basis elements. And then we need one more because it's going to be isomorphic to z to the fourth. Uh, so we're going to take h2 as our last basis element for c0k. Okay. So uh, again, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's a little exercise to check that uh, you know, these four original generators can be expressed in terms of these generators, dx2, uh, dx3, dx4, and h2 and vice versa, all in a unique way. So again, we've got a new basis for C0K. So that's, uh, that's what it says there. Okay, so now how do we calculate the homology? The way this process works, if you've got, a good, if you've got good bases so that uh, uh, differential, uh, yeah, pro key property is that differential sends every basis element either to another basis element or to zero. Uh, so here we've got X1 is a basis element, DX1 is another basis element. Uh, x2 is a basis element uh, for, you know, for, uh, uh, for C1, and dx2 we're using as a basis element for C0. Uh, x3 is a basis element for C1, and uh, dx3 is a basis element. Uh, x4 is, a is one of our basis elements for C1, and dx4 is one of our basis elements for C0. Uh, yeah, so that's how it works with all the elements that we've called x. And then uh, h1 that's a basis element with dh1 is zero h2 is a basis element with dh2 is zero and of course yeah, these dxi's dx1 we're using that as a basis element but if we apply d to that then that's d squared x1 which is automatically zero similarly we apply this d to this one you get d squared x2 which is zero apply d to this you get d squared x3 which is zero and so on so what we have to do, yeah, so the general rule for calculating homology in this kind of case, we, you know, where we've got pairs of base elements, xi and dxi, we, they just kind of cancel out. Uh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> we can just discard those, and the remaining things uh, are just the h1 and the h2, and they're going to give a basis for the uh, homology groups. Um, so our conclusion is that h0k is isomorphic to z, with just this h2 as, as the base cell, or square bracket h2 as base element. And H1K is also isomorphic to Z, just with this H1 as, as the uh, generator. And all the other homology groups are just zero. Uh, 